Chapter 1. Meditation may not be easy, but it's accessible to all. Many people have tried meditation and given up. Some have expressed an interest in doing so, but found figuring out where to start too tricky. Meditation requires concentration and practice, and the noise of today's world can often get in the way. It's also shrouded in many false ideas. For instance, many believe that you need to clear your mind completely in order to meditate correctly. That's not the case. You simply need to quiet your mind and allow thoughts to flow in and out without paying attention to them. It takes practice, but it's doable. Wherever you go, there you are, guides you through some simple meditation practices, explaining in detail the many important factors which help you to master meditation over the long term. Perhaps more importantly, it teaches us that although meditation doesn't come naturally to most people, it will come over time. Practice makes perfect in this case. The many physical and mental health benefits of meditation are well known. Still, the ability to reconnect with yourself and the present moment can only be achieved via quiet introspection and the art of mindfulness meditation. Dedicate time to mastering meditation and encourage yourself to practice. The benefits will come your way. Chapter 2. It's time to check in with yourself. All we have is the moment we're in right now, yet we find ourselves jumping forward to the future or looking back into the past. All too often, we stand still and think, now what, without realizing that there doesn't necessarily have to be a plan at all. By not connecting with yourself at this very moment, you can quickly lose touch with your inner self and as a result, end up living your life in a robot-like way. This strangles the possibility of creativity, the ability to learn new things and grow as a person. If you allow this to go on for long periods, your whole life will pass by instantly. Living in the present moment has more benefits than you realize. Not only does it make you happier, but it reduces stress, too. Mindfulness gives you confidence, calm, and wisdom, which we could all do with learning more about. When you hear the word meditation, what do you think of first? Most people have a negative image of meditation, assuming it to be something otherworldly or hippie-like even. The truth is that meditation is none of that and is simply the ability to be yourself and knowing who you are at your very core. It helps you see that you're on a path in life and can influence and change anything while going with a calm flow. Meditation helps you to open your eyes to the bigger picture. It allows you to see situations for their truth and not what you automatically assume them to be. Despite that, the ability to meditate takes time and practice, and it can only be mastered when you're truly ready to dedicate yourself to the cause. Did you know? Meditation has many benefits, including reducing the chances of age-related memory loss. Chapter 3. What exactly is mindfulness? Mindfulness is the ability to live in the present moment and not constantly be busying yourself with thoughts that aren't helpful or relevant. If you're someone who often sits and thinks over a million things they need to do today or think back over past times, mindfulness could help focus your mind and bring your focus back to the present. Mindfulness cultivates appreciation for everything around you in this present moment. It's about being in touch with yourself, nature, and the people around you. The past has nothing useful to say anymore, and the future is yet to come. Focus on the here and now and make it as successful as possible. John Kabat-Zinn talks about the way Buddhists see the modern world and the way most of us think. 
In this case, constantly thinking about the past and future is seen as totally irrelevant. Instead, Buddhists stay in the present moment, being in touch with everything around them and appreciating the value of every single second. Mindfulness isn't just about staying in the moment. It's also about being present in the moment without judgment, simply allowing life to happen, ebbing and flowing, and appreciating and accepting that life's unique story is unfolding. This can deeply enrich your life in general. Despite all of this, mindfulness isn't easy to master, and it requires effort and time. Our minds are constantly being bombarded with information and stimulation, and it's hard to shut all of them off and remain in the moment. John Kabat-Zinn suggests that you sit still for five minutes and try to focus on one thing. You'll soon notice the million and one thoughts that try to permeate your mind and consciousness, taking your focus away from the moment you're in. Practice stillness daily. We're bombarded with noise, but taking time out is essential. Chapter 4 Learn to use your breath as an anchor. Learning to sit and take in everything going on around you in a particular moment is more complex than it sounds. One thing that can help you is focusing on your breath. Breathing is natural. It is something we do without even thinking about it. However, your breath can also be used as an anchor, something to hold you in the moment and stop you from thinking of the past or jumping ahead to the future. Your breath is the one constant thing you have in life. Use it as a control mechanism to pull your awareness back to the present. Focusing on your breathing can be as simple as being more mindful of it, e.g. being aware of the inhale and exhale, noticing how it feels when air enters your lungs and how it feels when you breathe out. You'll need to practice this several times before it starts to feel like a natural anchor. But when you're meditating or simply trying to focus, use this breath anchor exercise whenever you feel like your mind is struggling. Many people falsely assume that if you meditate, you banish your life of all stress and you wander the earth feeling zen and calm about everything that life may throw at you. That's not the case. Stress occurs in life whether you meditate or not, but meditation allows you to understand it and deal with it in better ways than otherwise. We cannot control whether stress happens or not, but we can decide how to tackle it. Meditation can help you to go with it, understand the problem causing you stress, and make better choices to deal with it. John Kabat-Zinn suggests imagining a body of water. Waves sometimes ripple the surface. Some of those may be huge, some may be small, and others may be nothing of note. The water churns a little and then goes back to its normal still state. This is how you need to imagine yourself during times of stress. Everything is temporary and transient. Stress will come and go in your life. Allow yourself to ride the waves without becoming too concerned with the outcome. Meditation cannot magically cause these potential waves to stop, but it can give you something to hold on to until the waves abate. You can't stop the waves, but you can learn to surf. John Kabat-Zinn Chapter 5. Learning to do nothing can be surprisingly useful. We often believe that doing nothing about a situation or simply doing nothing generally means we're being lazy. That's not the case. Mindfulness teaches us that not doing something is just as constructive. By allowing things to be, you're allowing them to unfold in their own time and in the way they're supposed to. You don't necessarily have to make decisions about everything or take action on every single thing that comes into your life. 
Sometimes it's just as effective to observe and avoid judgment, using mindfulness to help you achieve it. By doing this, you're gaining more information on the situation and you're reducing any stress that may otherwise have built up. Constantly doing means that you're spending energy unnecessarily. Instead, choose to be still. Not everything requires a decision or an action right now. Observe and wait for the correct answer to come to you at the right time. Learning how to meditate allows you to master the art of non-doing. It shows you that avoiding the constant need to change or make things as perfect as possible is a waste of time and energy. It's far better to acknowledge a situation for what it is and let it unfold in its own time. By doing this, you're allowing every single moment in life to ebb and flow seamlessly into the next. We tend to have an automatic habit of judging everything in life as either good, positive, or bad, negative. By doing this, you're placing labels on things that don't need them. By practicing meditation and mindfulness, you'll learn to avoid judgment and instead let things be as they are, allowing them to shift and change as necessary. Mindfulness also incorporates the art of letting go. We hear let it go so often in the modern day, but we often say it and don't do it. The ability to let things go is exceptionally healthy and is a huge part of mindfulness. It means you're letting something go with acceptance. It means you're no longer struggling, trying to change something or resisting a change that is trying to come. By letting go, you're allowing yourself to be at peace. Let go of the things that are weighing you down. A new life awaits if you're brave enough to cast aside heavy baggage. Chapter 6. There is a difference between meditation and positive thinking. John Kabat-Zinn points out the critical difference between meditation and positive thinking. We hear a lot about adopting a positive mindset. However, it's essential to understand that meditation and positive thinking are two different things. When attempting to cultivate an attitude of mindfulness via meditation, you're not trying to change your way of thinking, you're simply aiming towards acceptance and acknowledgement. You're not adjusting what you think, you're just accepting it. However, positive thinking is the eagerness to change your thoughts from negative to positive. Positive thinking encourages you to take action and change. Meditation allows you to observe. Each has its own time and place. Learning to be more positive has a wealth of benefits attached to it. You'll be happier and more opportunities will come your way. It's a good idea to do both because positive thinking certainly has many benefits in life. However, John Kabat-Zinn points out that meditation and mindfulness allow you to accept things, often a healthier route. He also gives an example of a waterfall. A waterfall sees torrents of water cascading down its length crashing on the rocks below, and causing a reaction on the water's surface. Mindfulness and meditation won't change how you see that waterfall. It will simply allow you to appreciate it for its faults and its good parts without really judging between the two. That means you're not being affected by the crashing water, you're simply watching it. What lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. Ralph Waldo Emerson Chapter 7. Sitting during meditation is a great starting point to explore the world of meditation. Many people prefer to lay down when meditating, but sitting is considered a unique tool. When someone is meditating in a sitting position, it's obvious what they're doing. They're sitting in a position of dignity. However, adopting the correct position can be difficult at first. 
Posture is vital because it states intent. This means not slouching, but not being bolt upright either. Slumping shows low energy levels and negativity, while sitting too straight shows you're trying a little too hard. Instead, sit straight, almost mirroring the position of a mountain. The state of mind that exists when you sit in the right posture is itself enlightenment, John Kabat-Zinn. Try this for yourself, using your breath as a way to relax and focus. Set aside five or ten minutes every day at first and try to focus on something still. See how quickly your attention is pulled away by your thoughts and then use your breath to pull them back. Keep your posture light without allowing it to become stiff. Gradually increase the amount of time you do this. You should also be aware of what your hands are doing, as they're a pretty good pointer to how you're feeling internally. If you regularly ball your fists up, it means you're experiencing stress or anger. Try different positions with your hands while you're meditating and see how your energy shifts and changes. You can either come out of meditation in a loud way or quietly. It depends on what works best for you. As you're ready to go out of your meditation, you need to connect with your thoughts or the will to stop. You could try telling yourself that you're going to exit, that you've had enough, and that will bring awareness back to the room. Remember to continue focusing on your breath. Remember to exit your meditation slowly and carefully. Gradually bring your awareness back to the present moment. In some group sessions, a loud bell or gong is used to signal when the meditation is over. This can be effective because the loud noise jolts you back to the present moment and allows you to refocus. Meditation is a personal practice. There are no correct or incorrect ways to do it. Conclusion. Meditation doesn't necessarily have to be spiritual, and this is a word which many people struggle with. Mindfulness meditation can be whatever you want it to be for you. By allowing yourself to slow down, take stock of what is going on in your life, and observing actions and emotions as they flow in and out of your life, you'll see that you have far more control over your feelings and your actions than you think. The ability to focus your mind on the here and now and not allow your thoughts to wander backward or forward is a skill that takes time and effort to master. It's essential to have patience and practice to enable your ability level to rise. Over time, you will notice that small steps lead to huge gains. Far too many people try meditation and give up before the benefits start to flow. This isn't something that's going to change your life overnight. However, by giving it a little time and practicing as much as you can, you'll soon notice positive effects starting to flow. The modern world is fast-paced, busy, stressful, and frenetic. None of this is good for the human soul. We worry about everything. We overthink, we stress, and we panic. All of this affects how you feel and how you act. You have far more control over every situation in your life than you think, and you don't need to jump in and make fast decisions and actions immediately. Sometimes the best choices come after a period of reflection and observation. Try this. Sit comfortably and learn to focus on your breath. Notice how your chest rises and falls with every inhale and exhale and the way it feels within. Identify your posture. Do you slump or do you sit up too straight? Try adopting the stance of a mountain, solid and dignified. Sit and focus on one thing and see how long it is before your thoughts start to wander. When they do, focus on your breathing to pull them back.